what I just described to you now has become my practice of how I will be when I want to leave, when I leave the planet. That's it. This episode is proudly sponsored by Cienpo. Many of you watching have heard of Tristan Harris and the Center for Humane Technology. We've done many episodes on the perverse incentives around screen time and critically thinking about what balance truly maximizes our potential. Cienpo built a new smartphone interface and browser extensions as the new home screen for humanity. They're at a crossroads looking for a new CEO to come in or to partner with a larger organization that has the resources to bring this incredible technology to the world. They've built a high integrity foundation and are teed up for something wonderful. If interested, message the founder Andrew Dunn at andrew at cienpo.co. More info is in the bio. Thanks everyone and enjoy the episode. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We're on site at the beautiful old Transformative Technology Conference for our second annual partnership with them. We are now speaking with John Kamak. Hi, John. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming on the program. My pleasure. I'm so pumped to dive into things with you. Let's start things off with one of our favorite questions we love asking our guests. Are we really all one? Well, I would do a yes and no. <laughs> Uh, and maybe, ladies and gentlemen, it's a trick question. I'm not sure we're going to find out, aren't we? Uh, I think we all have common DNA. I think we may have a common spiritual connectedness. But I also think uh, part of the joy of life is being an individual in the oneness mm. and becoming more defined mm. in a self. Because if you become more defined in a self where you know what your boundaries are, you're actually less anxious. And then you have more capacity to act on your principles in the world. So I kind of like the duality of this. Interesting. There's connectivity, but there should also be individuality, and we need to honor that individuality while we also find ways to share values and common causes. So then there is this constant feeling on a moment-to-moment -moment basis of deep interconnectedness and deep unity and oneness yet at the same time we carry this uh also this unique blueprint that we have of bringing some sort of a gift some sort of a contribution to to our world and we carry those simultaneously well i think the i i believe human beings have more good than bad. I believe that human beings are seeking ways to be good. I believe some people were never, they never learned the lessons they needed. And uh, I live in Baltimore, Maryland. And Baltimore is a child city. Um, and I deal with those social issues as kind of a civically minded person working in community. And I don't judge people on their behavior because I think in many cases they never learned how to let their goodness be expressed because they were under threat from when they were very young. So I think finding the goodness and then how do you bring it into kind of your principles of right action and to the extent I have a little Buddhist in me, right action is something that I've worked to develop and I work to have it be an exercise that I always have it available to me in this conversation. And whatever decisions I make after I leave this interview, when I go home to my wife, uh, when I meet somebody on the street. And uh, I think that is a capacity that can be nurtured. And I think the this conference, when I look at all the interesting engineering and technology I can think of it as we're shifting brain waves, we're doing this and that, but I think are we giving people the ability to be calm enough to have that conversation with themselves where they find what's to be right and true for themselves, where their higher self can become more available in their relationship in the day-to-day -day lives, lives that they're living. What about your own personal experiences with those deep states of interconnectedness or ego loss or unconditional love, deep presentness? 
I've had them. Um, as a young man, I was enamored by an individual called Edgar Casey, and he's kind of gone out of favor, but I, I viewed him as kind of the American, almost like Presbyterian psychic. He was grew up in a Christian tradition, but uh, as a young man, he was able to go into a trance state, and from that he began to provide readings to people. He did thousands of readings. He had a sonographer who recorded them. They've been cross-referenced, and he um, he opened my eyes to the fact that there are altered states that we can reach, uh, and probably higher orders of consciousness. I think part of my life has been trying to see how much of that higher state I can reach, but not to just be a voyeur where I go have the experience, but by how much can I integrate in. So it's that awareness or that, um, I don't know if I'd call it a capacity. I think I would call it a uh, creating a way through a, a meditation practice where there's some availability to it, right? So you can be reminded or you can create reference points in your life so you get the contextual choices we all have every day framed in a way that is less about me being reactive or fearful, but more about me being in a place where I get the context of how to, how to be present in that moment with that human being or set of human beings. So uh, the Edgar Casey experience made me be a very devoted meditator through breath work when I was in my 20s. And it took me to altered states to, uh, I activated my Kundalini. I had a whole phase where I was, there was a lot of energy in my body. Uh, I think it was almost too powerful for me. So uh, it was hard to hang on to it or it kind of scared me. Uh, but I've always felt that I benefit from a practice and that practice is probably in a conference where you see tech in the name of the conference that the oldest mind altering technology is meditation. It's like the ancient technology it yeah. never goes out of date <laughs> yeah okay and for me personally any of the other technology which is very legitimate at this conference neural feedback photobiomodulation beds that create energy waves uh i need to have this core practice part of it and i view the other technology as a way to supplement okay is the most upstream issue our feelings of separation, our lack of interconnectedness? I believe that fundamentally human beings are the separation anxiety from your mother or from a higher existence is the fundamental thing we have to resolve in our lives. Yes. I yes. really do. And I, what are your key... Um, strategies, you think? Oh, boy. Um, well, I, have, I mentioned the practice. Um, I've been kind of a, I, I would say I, I'm an older guy now. I'm in my mid-60s. So my life has been trying to resolve this dilemma because until you, re, until you know that you can exist, there, there, it's like a, 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 a paradox you need to exist as a self, but you need to also be connected. And it's the challenge of dealing with both of these to be a non-anxious being. So I did a lot of work in my late 40s that um, involved a coach, and I had to begin to think of myself as fundamentally asked the question, could I survive as a self without the relationships I was in? It, it was not because I thought I was going to lose them, but it was being in relationship with other people creates certain obligations we're almost wired to provide. 
And I think there's a dilemma for most human beings. Can I be in an intimate relationship and still be a self or do I surrender that to the the idea of a fusion with another human being? Mm -hmm. And the work was to not be fused to my partner, my wife, and I was very fearful if I did that, there wouldn't be a relationship. And it was exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. The more I could be a whole self, the more was available to be in the relationship because I could yeah. risk more. Yeah. It was actually, a, for me, it was a beautiful unfolding. Um, so that was kind of a different type of practice. Um, to stay calm during that work, I, d I added an interesting technology beyond the ancient practice. I began to do neural feedback. And the neural feedback was to allow my brain waves to uh, normalize where there was a little less anxiety. Uh, and I, I find anxiety is kind of the, it's very prevalent in society, I think now. I think we're in kind of a regression. So I view some of this technology can reduce that. A practice can reduce it, but for me, Going back to this story to give the punchline, there was one or two very intense experiences that I can only describe as almost going beyond the framework. It was like an ayahuasca experience without the ayahuasca where I knew on a fundamental level I could survive even if I was alone in the world. And in saying it, the language is nothing compared to the experience. And it was one of, and at the conclusion of it, I'd been given a freedom. Yeah. Because the freedom is that if you're beholden to other relationships because you're worried about the reciprocity, which is the attachment issue, you're not free to be all who you are, mm. right? And when I had that freedom to be more at risk rather than giving me the freedom to leave relationships that gave me the freedom to be more present in them and the the energy in the relationships began to grow it was a beautiful it, it was a turning point for me so I, I i think i'm giving you my own kind of response yeah to yeah. your question which i think you're asking it on maybe a more esoteric level than i'm responding I'd be your responses I'm, are examples and yeah yeah this is a, this is my example from my life this yes, is my truth yes I'm yes sharing yes yes, with yes, you. yes and deeply reson resonates and then what is the overall purpose of this creation i think it's to be in balance between being a self and being connected i, I think dealing with the duality mm. i really do mm. and i think that's the the journey of my own. Ooh, that's the play point. This the, is the play the, point. The play point is both is dealing with the duality of being seemingly separate, of dealing with the illusion yes. of that separation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the play point. That is this play. You've got that it. it. That's the dance of life to me, fundamentally, um, and in a way, becoming less attached. Um, in a way that lets you have your freedom to be present in the world without reaching, without reaching or without avoidance. And I, when I, when I look at myself as, am I in flow in, in life? I do an exercise every evening. Um, I look over the day. So tonight when I go to bed, the fact we're having this conversation now, I will, uh, I will retrieve it along with other conversations I've had. And I will ask, and I will then do an assessment of the energy I had in the conversation. Was I reaching to be too approve? Did I want your approval more? Was I trying to fix something in you? Or was there something that emerged that actually I avoided dealing with it, right? And I became a little more distant. I just want to be aware of that. And it's, it's very subtle. 
But mm -hmm. to me, it's whether there's flow and whether I was being truthful and present to my own feelings and to you out of respect for you. So yeah. it's an exercise that takes, yeah. mm, I, can, I can do a day in probably five minutes. And to me, it's being truthful to what was true for me, right? Uh, it's about me in relationship to myself. And then I, I'm aware of where did I, again, reach too far? Where did I avoid? Note it. Then is there something to fix? Is a fix in the relationship or is in me being aware of my behavior? And if I did reach or I avoided, what was I fearing? And was that fear a reality or not? What's been remarkable in this little practice of mine is many times when there is something that made me react because I feared, the next day I will go and reach out to that person and have an experiment of the thing I want avoided, I will then um, face with them. Yeah. And then I can look to see if the reaction I thought that was happening actually happened or not. So I create a really interesting causality. Yeah. If you do this long enough, you get a lot clearer. <laughs> yes. It's a, it's, yes. To me, it's a, yes. my in-the-world practice, right? Yes, yes. With me being truthful to myself and having this. This is me, John Hayworth Kamak, having as honest a relationship with my inner self as I can to be clarity. Because I think clarity yeah. is the power of being present without attachment, right? And that that can create for people that will do the work. I, I think the word that comes to me yeah, is, as yeah. I age with this, is the grace of being in the world in a certain way that is easier for me, right? I don't carry the burdens of other people or my own burden. And if one finds that, then I, actually, I think with you, there's a little moment of, ser I'm feeling a moment of serendipity, mm. right? Serendipity is, is yeah. are beautiful little occasions that uh, make me feel the power of a God yeah. that cares about us yes. and can let us have moments where we can feel complete love for another human being and for ourselves. Yes. Yes. Almost as though there's a warm cuddling that's happening at those times this is to be, to love yourself for being who you are with all my or your flaws because the the respect i have for myself is a soul making a journey yeah right and the journey's kind of messy you know because we got to deal with other human beings we got to deal with our own response just Every time I do this exercise, it's like taking a silk cloth and rubbing it against a stone. And the stone is all my patterns and behavior. But if you do it gently and you do it consistently, you become a, a slightly more graceful being in the world. Um, and then with that clarity, I have found the freedom to go to different states because if you can have love, this is about, because what replaces the fear is an acceptance of the moment, um, This, the extraordinary, again, another paradox, the beauty that comes even when there's pain or suffering. Yeah. That beauty and suffering can coexist. So yeah. it's the ability to deal with complex paradox Yes, yes. It does not rob you of your ability to be present with it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm going to take this a step further because yes. I'm feeling like we're having a good conversation. Likewise. So I'm 67 years old. I'm accepting my mortality. And what I just described to you now has become my practice of how I will be when I want to leave, when I leave the planet. That's it. That's the last moment of consciousness. I And I only realize, realized this about a year ago, that this practice was a, about how to be 
my practice, my way of being most effective of being a graceful being on the planet in this life, but it also yeah. was the way to release when it's time to go, right? Yeah. Where there's a little choice, and again, the paradox will be there. You have, you're alive, and you will be moving on, right? There are people you love, you'll be leaving them, right? Yeah. To be able to hold that place, yeah, right? And I can see my journey taking me there because it will come. <laughs> Ooh, huh. And it's and it's okay. Yeah. This is the other thing. It's yeah. okay. You actually see the beauty in it. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. So. Where, whereas the complete opposite is the fear in it. Well, I didn't realize I was doing this to prepare for this. But now I can see that it is part of my work and it is, uh, I, and I didn't, this is not what I thought the outcome would be because when you're younger, you don't really attach to the end. But there's a point in one's life where this becomes accepting one's own death is probably, the, when we go back to attachment, how much attachment any of us had to being alive, right? It's like the greatest insanity that we, the state will be the state forever. Yeah. So I, I have this, um, there's a beautiful little app out called You're Gonna Die. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the app? You're Gonna Die. There, there may be another one that we use called We Croak, which oh, well, We Croak, that's the one. Oh, we Croak. Oh, so I'm, I'm a power okay. user of We Croak. It's a great one. Yeah. Yeah, and We Croak um, gives you what five, five, five a day, yeah. little reminders that I'm going to die, right? And they're beautiful little vignettes, usually a sentence or two or a paragraph. So. Um, not only do, uh, do I do this, but my wife, who I've been married to for 31 years, we read these to each other. Wow. So, so <laughs> I did my own little inner journey and work, but here's my, my life partner. And in reading these to one another, we're recognizing this is our journey. And it will, we both, this is an inevitable thing. And it's preparing us for, again, together but we will separate together and separate the the duality again. We're one, but we're separate. And death will create that separation, at least in this state of consciousness. And uh, it's brought this vividness of the, how magnificent it is to have a day, another day to be present and conscious where the little things suddenly start to become magical. Yeah. Because you're there and you're aware. The, the leaf leaving the, the tree going to the ground becomes, because you're there in this body, seeing that. And I, in my time with her, I appreciate that. But it said, uh, all things must end. It's an exercise in attachment. And it's intensified, at least in my case, the, uh, the joy, the, the gift you're given if you become aware of that is the presence of being but not needing it forever. Yeah. Being able to let go. So, yeah. so that's kind of my spiritual journey. And I can do out-of-body experiences and lucid dreaming and things like that. But those are the, the cherry on the top of the Sunday experiences. I think for me it's been the work of the 40-year practice to even to be able to articulate to you this inner life of mine which has given me the ability to deal with duality on a day-to-day -day basis a little more gracefully yes yes so this exact key here that has been communicated which is the gracefulness of dealing with the duality 
dealing with the illusion of separation from the one, dealing with this, this key, how to gracefully unite with the one on a moment to moment basis and also have some sort of ability to learn these lessons that you've been communicating to us, this one of all things end that this, that this, that this, uh, you know, we just had Jim Doty on the show and he was saying no beginning, no end, no separation. And that was very interesting as well. Mm -hmm. So that kind of also in a sense, yes, we m end in a physical potential incarnation, mm -hmm. but nothing ever ends. This recording ends, but creation continues creating and becoming more alive. So there is mm -hmm. no end. I'm, I'm not sure what I believe about that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of an, I'm unresolved on, I think there is a higher, I, 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 I believe there's a higher self, but I got to admit I'm going through an existential crisis on, am I sure or is it something else? So I try to simplify this. I have a practice. It gives me peace, it gives me clarity. I think I have an operating model of the context of what I'm doing. Uh, I know there are higher states of consciousness because I've had my moments. And the moments are, the higher I go, the more I feel. Hmm. I feel connected to a broader and broader part of the world around me. Yes. Yes. Right? Yep. And uh, it, and by that is you are aware of yourself, but you're aware of all the life around you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, what I don't know is that when I leave my body, is that where I go, or do I go to the astral plane, or do I go wherever my karma will take me? You know, uh, that will be the great adventure, right? I'd like to. I'd like to have Transtech give me a little what, way where I. What can, I are you talking about? Say again. What I? What I are you referencing when you say where you go next? What I? My awareness. Isn't this all your awareness? It is. Yes. Yeah. This is all our awareness. You have. And the collective, yes. Yes. This is all creation experiencing itself. So when you say, where does the I go it next? Gets, it gets reabsorbed. What would you say? more aliveness could it be that on the other side of death of this incarnation is actually more aliveness and that this itself is the most beautiful thing possible. This is the most beautiful thing possible for creation to create where we can feel the illusion of that separation and play and all be that and feel that and experience it through each other, through the interconnectedness of all. Mm -hmm. This may, there may, may be nothing possibly more beautiful than this. It's maybe the only impossible. It may be the only 
impossible. Nothing else being more impossible. Nothing else being impossible except something being more beautiful than creation, than what this is. Well, I'm prepared to say, again, I'm going to speak from experience, that I would agree with you that there have been moments in my life where the beauty is more available to me in the connectivity. Yeah. I think we're all seekers for that. I would think that, I do believe that if there is a consciousness beyond this life, the work we all do in this life will be reflected in the level of availability to that beauty we move towards. And we're all seeking to yeah. move towards it. Yes. Um, I believe this world, this universe is, it had to be created by a higher consciousness. It's just so remarkable. Yeah. And that, um, the fundamental, and you go back to the earlier question around separation. We separated from that consciousness at one point, and we separate, you separate from your mother, you separate from that consciousness. You're working to kind of resolve that through practice or maturity, emotional maturity. And it's kind of the hero's journey in another way, is getting back, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of think again when you go to trans tech, it's for me, I'm only interested in the companies that aid the journey. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah. And some of them will be distractions from the journey. Or How do you discern? Um, does it create a greater connectivity where uh, I'm able to be in a place where uh, I can more freely express, be aware of the connectivity? connection to myself, connection to another that allows me to come out of my heart in a way that um, is building a genuine residence with another human being, starting with myself, that um, is frankly built on love, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and something... Um, so, because I think there can be a performance part of this, like I want to be better, I want to be able to work harder than somebody else at Google. It's like, that's a materialism of having a brain that can do more and can compete better. I kind of like it where it's, I become a, a deeper, richer person, and then from that place, I'll use other technologies that allow me to build relationships with others that leave net a uh, more civil world and a world where um, there's less fear, more love and respect, and more peace, inner peace and peace between human beings. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm curious, how do you feel about the next evolutionary step of consciousness flowering in this creation? I think we're at a, um, I'm not sure which way it's going to go be honest with you what are the ways that you see well I can see an emergence of individuals that desire a better world 
that can be enabled by tools that let them find their better self and their higher self, let them reduce their anxiety. Again, fear is the opposite of love. And can that capacity be brought to bear in ways that let people apply it to kind of societal issues where we heal the planet? Um, and in doing that, we heal ourselves? Yeah. Um, or do we we let the the forces of fear, which I think are very institutionalized around the world and in the U.S. Part of the beauty of creation itself. Yeah. I, th I think there's a threat that um, we're becoming more of a fear-based society right now. Mm. And uh, it plays out in politics. It plays out in race. Um, some of the race part is historical and it's a, a terrible legacy but we need to get beyond that and we need to heal and we need to yeah we need to know that we can love we can what does it mean to love one another right so i only met you an hour ago right yeah so what and what in any of the seconds we were together, what was the right way for me to be with you, right? Yeah. So how do we, how do more people think about that and not have the fear to act in a way that brings out your better side to be available and then it kind of compounds. Yeah. I think these things kind of spiral in a way. So Butterfly effect out. I do, yeah. I, I, I yeah. think it can be this I think it can become an emergence, right? Yeah. Or it can become uh, a regression where mm. we get more isolated than ourselves, fear becomes more the norm, and we begin to blame other people for our own mm. unhappiness, mm. and then we hold them accountable for it, and, and it this can is, get really ugly. This is the greatest challenge this of is it. creation. We're right there right, right, there, now, right now, and it's playing out in our society. Yeah. So... Love and fear on the yin and yang. On it's the right duels, there, man. Right and there. I think it's uh, being amplified, right? So we need to have conferences like this because we need to amplify the... The love side. The love side. Yeah. And, we, and we need to release the love in people. So um, it wasn't really discussed at this conference. I believe it will be at future conferences. But I think the uh, the work of reintroducing some of these ancient organics, psilocybin, and other drugs that yeah. is, because I was there in the 60s. They have billions of years of intelligence. They have, uh, they do. And the life forms that have used them have a certain wisdom. Yeah. Right? So, uh, and if you look at the creative, the reason LSD was shut down was there were so many people who were their creativity is moving beyond the bounds of how society was structured. It threatened the government. Yeah. Right. Yep. So they just said it's illegal. Soon, it's illegal. soon as it threatens the economic machinery, which is profiteering on feelings of separation. It is, and that that's why this regression because there's too much profit for the media, yeah. even the the two political parties. Yeah. To be fear mongers to one another. To one another. Correct. So yeah. how do you offset that? I would like to think that in the emergence of of these ancient organics that allow one to reset, if you really look at what happens in the brain and the default network, you, you and I are both kind of wired in a way, we, all of us are, where our default network is kind of sets the context of how we respond to pattern recognition in our lives. I kind of think of that as also the accumulation of our karma. Yeah. So, yeah. It, and if you've done the work, working off your karma, how long does this take? Okay, a lot. A how, lot how many work. spins around the, yeah. the sun does it take? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe these ancient compounds have been given to us to give us some freedom to do resets a little bit faster. But you still got to do the work. Yeah. You still got to. Very interesting. And you got to do it in a in a context of trust and love. To find your higher self, yeah, right, and slay your d demons, but, but maybe I, I almost think that the reintroduction of these, both underground and legal, 
could let a generation of people begin to redefine the relationships you want with yourself, with one another, and with the planet. Yeah. The, plan the yes. planetary yes. consciousness that has yet to emerge in response to global climate change, yeah. I personally have a hope and a hypothesis. These organic compounds is a gift that will let us r redefine the relationship we want to Mother Earth yes. and ourselves, and it will be a renaissance. Yes, yes. That's the hope I, yeah. I, I take to bed every night. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> John, thank you so much for coming on our show and talking to us about this. This has been deeply profound. Thank you. It was an honor to be with you and with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking about all of these incredible points. Please let us know in the comments. Check out the links in the bio below to more of John's work. Check out links in the bio below the Transformative Technology Conference. Thank you, Brady Sprunger, for co-producing the show. We really appreciate you, brother. Thank you. And also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the organizations around the world and in your communities that you believe in. You can find our links below to our show, PayPal, Patreon, Cryptocurrency. Please support us and help us continue growing our reach with this kind of content. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you soon. Peace.